Space has always been a marvel, a once-in-a-lifetime tourist destination for people with deep pockets. For the military, it's a potential new battlefront, and countries are already having their big guns on display. The United States, Russia, and China keep getting cleverer and cleverer in this not-so-silent battle for domination. Now, surely, you must have figured that guns in this case aren't the traditional rifles or magnums or snipers or all of those. These are more, well, sci-fi. And now, word on Space Street is that the Space Force may soon be unveiling the biggest gun of all. Let's take a look, starting with what really is the Space Force? The United States Space Force, or USSF, is a department of the armed forces tasked with handling basically everything that has to do with space in the United States. They existed as the Air Force Space Command under the U.S. Army from 1982 to 2019, before the then U.S. President Donald Trump made them an independent, uniformed service, like, say, the Air Force. The Space Force was officially founded in December 2019, with the U.S. realizing and acknowledging just how much of a vantage point space would be in modern wars. Hopefully, we never find out in practice. Hopefully. On paper, however, space is a military gold mine, if utilized to the max. According to Wikipedia, the Space Force remains the smallest armed service in the U.S., with 6,434 personnel, supported by 77 spacecraft. This pales in comparison to the Air Force's 5,000-plus manned aircraft 406 intercontinental ballistic missiles, and over 650,000 personnel and civilians. Now, remember, the U.S. spends far more on the armed forces than any other country in the world. So even though the Space Force is relatively small, they're still backed by the most advanced tech equipment and billions of dollars. Defense News reported a $2 billion launch estimate of the Space Force, with costs likely to rack up to $13 billion by 2024. The personnel count is also expected to rise to 15,000 within this period. These dollar to chings go to managing and maintaining multiple systems, including the GPS, military satellite communications, missile warning systems, space surveillance network, and satellite control network. There's also the Boeing X-37B reusable robotic spacecraft under their care. As a bonus, here's a fun fact for you. The global space economy is expected to more than double from the current $450 billion to $1 trillion within the next two decades. March 2020 saw the first official launch of the Space Force, which was a military communications satellite lifted by a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. And in 2021, the Guardians, that's what Space Force members are called, sent its tactically responsive Launch 2 satellite, aka TAC RL2, into low Earth orbit. This was its first tactically responsive launch mission, and a real glimpse into what they're all about, to make the U.S. more agile and dynamic in response to events in not only deep space, but also just a few miles above the Earth. And the sheer existence of the Space Force may be the United States' response to the war of satellites that seems to be brewing, particularly with China and Russia. War of Satellites China launched an experimental satellite in 2013, how do we know it's an experiment? Well, the satellite was named Xi'an, meaning experiment. The Xi'an was seen moving close to a smaller satellite and shadowing it for a while. AGI was the company keeping an eye on this Xi'an activity, and they were stunned when the smaller satellite kept on disappearing and reappearing on their radars. Now, these radars are mighty powerful, and were most likely not glitching. And they later figured that what was really happening was that Xi'an had grappling arms, which were used to repeatedly pluck the smaller satellite out of orbit and then return it. The Chinese government attested to this, but claimed it was only for research purposes and handling debris in space. However, it's impossible for any major government to be comfortable with these capabilities. Because despite what the Chinese government says, the fact remains that they have a satellite in the works that could navigate to other satellites and pluck them out of space. Russia, on the other hand, has the Kamikaze, and the Kamikaze, known officially as Cosmos 2499, has maneuvering abilities like never seen before. This satellite is able to get close enough to other satellites and disable or destroy them. Kamikaze was launched in 2014, and the US monitored it initially as a piece of debris, only for it to come to life and get awfully close to other satellites. Understandably, 
The US was disturbed by this because these satellites can move at speeds of up to 17,500 miles per hour. So for Kamikaze to be able to maneuver close enough to other satellites to gather data, there must be some intent behind the capability. And sure enough, three years later in 2017, Russia launched another satellite that vomited a smaller satellite. This smaller satellite then launched a projectile. Clearly, this has potential use in battles, and the United States knew it. Russia wasn't done though. Two years later, in 2019, they launched the Nesting Doll, a satellite that combines the two main capabilities of the previous two launches. That is, this new satellite could maneuver close to satellites in orbit, spy on them, vomit a smaller satellite within, and then shoot a projectile. The Nesting Doll then got so close to a US satellite that official complaints had to be made to Russia. It's no wonder that the Space Force was born at the end of that year. The US relies so much on satellites to keep things running smoothly. As of today, they have 1,897 satellites. China is second with 412, and Russia comes in third with 176 satellites. These satellites are used in monitoring threats on land, air, sea navigation, reconnaissance, communications, missile detection, missile guidance, basically everything. And despite their importance, these satellites are relatively unprotected and are just floating in space. Recognizing that, the Pentagon requested $304 million of the 2020 budget to fund space weaponry efforts. Since then, it's been test after test, mainly of directed energy weapons, such as neutral particle beams and lasers. To clarify, the US has had projects on directed energy weapons in the works for decades, but lately they've upped the ante. War of Laser Weapons The US military already tested its first operational laser in the Persian Gulf, and it was an outstanding success. The laser beams, moving at the speed of light, destroyed targets that were on land and in flight. More tests are still ongoing to develop laser weapons that could degrade or damage satellites in space from ground or when mounted on fighter jets. The Air Force's $155 million Self-Protect High Energy Laser Program has three components, including the Laser Advancements for Next Generation Combat Environments, or LANCE, the Straight Control System, and the Laser Pod Researching Development Container, being developed by Boeing. The military would then opt for the most cost-efficient component that gets the job done. China, according to Space News, would field ground-based lasers that could blind satellite sensors and maybe even destroy hardware structures. Although a giant leap forward, ground-to-space laser weapons might still be insufficient today because we now know that space would likely be the main battlefront of modern wars. Thus, space-to-space -space weapons remain necessary. Now, satellites are expected to have both defensive and offensive weapons. That is, stealth, easy maneuvers, and a distributed architecture for defense. To adopt the new architecture, there are plans to launch 1,300 satellites, so even if one or two or a hundred get damaged, the overall system won't be crippled. In terms of offense, laser-mounted satellites to blind sensors and damage hardware are being researched. Now, although there's remarkable progress of lasers on Earth, it may not be the same with space-based ones because the conditions are simply too different. These satellites move at speeds close to 20,000 miles per hour, making them almost impossible to shoot with precision. But hey, it's not impossible. Russia, in fact, has already designed its Polyus spacecraft to be fitted with a megawatt carbon dioxide laser, the highest power continuous wave lasers available today. Now, with weapons mounted on satellites, space-to-ground weapons seem possible and are as scary as you can imagine, but apparently there are none in the works. This is because there's an intercontinental treaty that prevents such weapons, and understandably so. Because what used to seem like science fiction is now upon us. The age of lasers in space has arrived. Hopefully, these lasers would never need to be called upon and would only stand as a sign of human intelligence to aliens. However, they might seem necessary because hundreds of billions of dollars are floating over us in space in the form of satellites, and they're left completely vulnerable to attacks. That has to change, and it seems that the United States, Russia, and China are already taking the lead. Another thing that must change is you not being subscribed to this channel. So kindly hit that red subscribe button below, smash the bell button next to it, and you'll be the first to know when new videos are released. Also, if you learned anything in this video, 
comment what you think about the potential weaponization of space, and kindly click the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. That'll be all for this video. Thanks for watching.